Okay, uh, let's continue. Uh, last time we talked about the uh, uh, moving least square method. And the last time we talked about the uh, uh, f functions, and the last time the uh, the parameter of these functions, there is only one parameter, the the x and the f of x, and uh, we have the data points uh, x one f one. Okay, the the difference between the uh, moving least square method and the the traditional regression analysis since the we uh, use uh, weight functions the traditional methods the s the capital s is defined by the summation of the ei square and uh, the ei will be the The EI is the the FI is the uh, the input function value at the f the nodal points and uh, the G of XI which is an approximate functions and uh, usually we use the polynomial functions uh, to uh, to approach the uh, the real f of functions. That's the traditional. Uh, Regression analysis. But uh, for the moving least square method, we will multiply a weight function for each uh, for each data point. So the uh, the wi, uh, which is uh, functions of the distance between the uh, data point and uh, the center point, the center point, uh, which is also uh, the point we like to establish the g function and the, uh, the weight functions the xi minus xc xc which is the uh, the coordinates of the center point and uh, the xi which is the uh, coordinate of the data points and uh, the wi okay most of the time we like to use a bear shape a bear shape the uh, weight functions and uh, uh, the application of the weight functions uh, we can get a zoom in and a zoom out effect. The zoom in means the for any point, uh, which uh, if since the center point uh, can be moved uh, in the in the entire domain. So for different center point, we will get a different set of the uh, g of x functions. So the g of x functions. Which is also functions of the center point. For different, uh, for different center point, we will get uh, different uh, uh, approximate functions. Okay, uh, to get the zoom in the, and the zoom out effect, we can use the bear shaped functions. Also, we can use. A linear line function. The linear line function can also give you the uh, the similar zoom in the, and the zoom out effect. But the uh, the bear shape functions uh, will have one more advantage if you use uh, this type of the weight functions. Since uh, sometimes we not only like to get the the approximate functions, sometimes we like to take derivatives. To the approximate functions, uh, sometimes it is even more than 
uh, first uh, first derivative. Sometimes the second derivative, the third derivative, we like to calculate uh, the, for the g of x functions. Okay, so uh, I will give you the formula for the bear shaped functions, and, uh, which is the uh, e exponential functions. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the uh, exponential uh, exponential functions, and the, uh, most of the time we will use the alpha, which is uh, equal to zero point four, and the, if you change it for different alpha, you will get uh, sometimes the it will be uh, you will ha have the higher values at the center point. And uh, you will have uh, a narrow, uh, a, a narrow, but uh, increase great, uh, great uh, increase more, more rapidly compared to other functions. And uh, the capital D, which is the the, di the distance of this one, also it is called the radius of influence. The radius of influence. Okay, so that's the for the. Uh, uh, you can say it is a one-dimensional uh, moving this square method. Okay, so uh, take the screenshot. about the two-dimensional moving least square method. What is the two-dimensional approximate function based on the moving least square method? And uh, for the two-dimensional problems, we got two parameters, x and y. And uh, the single function f. Okay. <coughs> also, we have several data points. For all the data points, they are controlled by two parameters, x and y. Okay, so the x and the y, they are the parameters of the, uh, of the uh, intended function f. So for each data point, for each data point, we need to specify the x1, y1, and the corresponding f1. Okay, so that's the first data point. The for for the first data point, we we need to know the the two parameters used to get the f function value f1 and uh, also for the second data point
Okay, that's the uh, that's the uh, the data points. And uh, after we got the all these data points, then how can we uh, get an um, approximate functions to uh, to describe the uh, the function values? And uh, uh, originally, the, all these data points can give you some information, but uh, those data points they are discrete points; they are not continuous function. But uh, the approximate functions can give you a uh, continuous uh, functions. We can use this approximate function to uh, estimate uh, the the results of the function f uh, at all the points in the considered domain. Okay. Take the screenshot. All right, then I will erase. What kind of the approximate functions we like to use uh, to describe the behavior of the f functions? They uh, considered for these two parameters x and y. And uh, most of the time, we will use the polynomial function. For example, the g of x, y could be the a0 plus a1 x plus a2 y. Okay, so it is also the uh, the first degree uh, polynomial functions of the x and the y. And uh, also we could use the So that's the second degree polynomial functions used for the two-dimensional problems. Uh, most of the time, we like to uh, use uh, complete polynomial functions. The complete polynomial functions means the if we if we include all these six terms, then we can guarantee for any uh, second degree polynomial functions we can always use these functions to describe uh, all possible uh, second degree polynomial functions. And uh, it is also the uh, first degree complete polynomial functions. If we use the polynomial uh, complete polynomial functions, then we can guarantee that all the first degree polynomial functions can be described by this method. Okay, so after we uh, decide what kind of the uh, the approximate functions we like to use. Then the problem is the how can we solve those uh, unknown parameters or uh, you can call them the undetermined coefficients. Okay, so we can define the EI which is the FI minus So it could it can be the F one minus if we use the first degree uh, approximate functions, the EI will be uh, a formula like this one. And also, we can do the traditional
and uh, the B matrix include uh, all the uh, all the uh, row in each row in the B matrix. You will see the one x uh, one x one y one for the first row, one x two y two for the second row. Okay, so that's the B matrix. It is uh, it, it is the dimensions of the uh, of the e vector f vector and the b and the b matrix a vector. It depends on the uh, how many uh, how many data points you used uh, to get the approximate functions. Okay, so that is the traditional method. Uh, even for the moving least square method. The, the definition for the E vector, it is uh, still the same. It is uh, still the same. Okay, now it's time for you to take the screenshot. Then what is the uh, moving least square method? Uh, again, we will have uh, different definition for the capital S. Right now, it is the summation is wi times ei square. And uh, sometimes we can use the e transpose w e. Okay. And uh, the E vector uh, is uh, defined by the difference between the uh, input function value fi and uh, the uh, the the results obtained from the appro the approximate functions. And uh, the W matrix, which is a diagonal matrix. The, the W matrix is a is a diagonal matrix. Only those diagonal elements they have the non-zero values. Okay, and the the WI WI depends on the distance between the data point and the, the center point. The center point, which is the considerable point, and uh, uh, we will establish the approximate functions based on the for the for for uh, for the center point. But uh, if we uh, change the center point, then you will get uh, different functions. So the uh, all the undetermined coefficients a0, a1, a2 they depend on the considered point or the center point so uh, as long as you change the location of the center point you will get a set of different results okay so that's the W functions and uh, how do we calculate the WI Okay, so the WI you can say So it is a three-dimensional uh, surface, and uh, uh, we have the the maximum values uh, wherever the data points 
which is located also on the center, on the center point, you will get the maximum width function value. But uh, if we move out from the distance d, it is a symmetric function. So uh, no matter for the positive x minus xc or negative x minus xc, you will get the same uh, weight function value, and uh, uh, also for the y, uh, also for the y minus uh, yc axis. No matter for the positive or negative values, uh, as long as the distance between the data point and the, the uh, center point, it, as long as the distance is the same, then you will get the same uh, values of the W. And uh, uh, the formula for the, uh, for the pear-shaped weight functions, uh, it is the same as the, uh, the, the, the one shown in the previous page. If we use the linear functions, it is also possible, but right now it will be a linear line. Okay, so it will be uh, a linear line, but uh, it, the linear fun uh, the linear type of the shape it is defined uh, for the three dimensional base. Okay, so that's the W functions and uh, for the uh, for the definition of the capital S. Okay, take the, the screenshot. And then I'm going to talk about uh, uh, the application of the moving least square method. The, the most famous uh, application of this method, which is the, the element-free analysis. Element-free analysis method, or the mesh-free analysis method, compared to the okay. For these two methods, you need to compare the, to the uh, traditional finite element method. And uh, then we will discuss the difference between these two methods and uh, the traditional finite element method. For the finite element method, um, you you will okay. We will define the element. For the finite element method, first you need to define elements for the problems. And uh, there are some requirements for the definition of the, of the elements. First, the, first, the union of all elements. Uh, in Chinese, the union will will be the will be the lian ji. Okay, remember in the uh, in the mathematics, we uh, if we define two uh, uh, two subdomains, then we can define what is the union of these two subdomains. In Chinese, it is uh, close to the. Uh, definition of the DNG. Okay, the union of all elements 
must be must be same as the entire structure. Okay, so it means the you cannot uh, you cannot uh, neglect any part of the of the structures. You need to define elements for the entire structures. Since uh, only only if you define uh, the elements and uh, the elements must must cover the entire structure, then the union of all elements will be uh, same as the entire structures. Okay, so that's the first requirement when you define the uh, when you define the elements. Also, the second requirements it requires the intersection. of two neighboring elements. Will be only the common boundary. Of these two elements. Okay, so the intersection of two elements will be only the common boundary. You cannot, you cannot define two, uh, two elements, but uh, for, th for these two elements, you have some overlaps of some regions. Uh, it is not allowed. So the definition for the elements, you, you should follow the rule. All the uh, elements they need to be uh, the, the intersections of these two, only the common boundaries. Okay, so that's the definition. Uh, that's the requirements when you define the element. After you define the elements, also you need to define the nodal points. Okay, the, the number of the nodal points used for each element, it depends on what kind of the elements you use for, uh, for your analysis. Uh, for the plane problems, you have the four node type uh, elements. Also, you have the uh, eight node or nine node elements. If you use the eight node element, then for each element, you need to define all eight nodal points. Okay, that's the eight node element. Also, you could uh, it is possible uh, you can use the nine node element. If you use the nine node elements, okay, not only the eight uh, the eight nodes need to be defined on the four boundary lines. Also, you need to uh, define uh, a point which is inside the element. Uh, usually, this uh, inside node point close to the center of this element, but it is not necessary. Uh, it, uh, it is uh, uh, always be the center point. Y you can define the inside point which is uh, uh, other than the center. Okay, so it depends on what type of the element you use. You, uh, if you decide the, uh, the domains of all elements, also you need to define the required nodal points to describe this element. Okay, so that's for the finite element method. And uh, the definitions of the elements and uh, the nodal points Combine these two, uh, the, the work to combine the elements, the definitions of the elements and the, the definitions of the uh, nodal points. It is called uh, the mesh.
Okay, so what is the mesh? The mesh includes uh, two, uh, two parts of the work. The first part, you need to define the elements of the problems. The second part will be the definition of the nodes of the problems. And what is the automatic mesh? The automatic mesh means the, the program uh, uh, will help you to define these two types of the information. And uh, uh, the, the program which can help you to establish the mesh for the problems. And uh, for this type of the method, it is also called uh, the uh, automatic mesh. Okay, so take the screenshot, then I will continue. Okay, then what is the uh, what is the element free method or the mesh free method? Okay, if we use the element-free method or mesh-free method, then for each analysis problem, we will define only the nodal points for this, point, for, for this problem. We will not define the elements for the problem. And uh, for the finite element method, the elements will also For the finite element method, we will define the elements. We will define the element. The element also represents uh, a, lo a, a so-called local area. The local area. Okay. For each element, we will define the displacement functions. And uh, the displacement functions defined for this element, uh, the displacement functions will be used only for this element. Okay, so. Uh, Okay, remember the, uh, for the finite element method, the uh, defined displacement functions, and the sometimes we will say they are assumed displacement functions, since the, uh, at the beginning of the, of the analysis, we don't know the solutions, the, what, what is the exact solutions for the displacement. And uh, uh, we will use some uh, unknown nodal displacements. Right now, we don't know the values of the uh, of the, of the displacement at the, those nodes. So they are called the unknown nodal displacements. And uh, the the displacement functions they are established based on the, uh, all these uh, unknown nodal displacements. So the so the uh, displacement functions, they are not uh, on, not not only uh, for only a, a, a single functions. The assumed functions, you can say they are uh, we have infinitely uh, possible solutions. Since the uh, unknown nodal displacement, they can be 
an arbitrary uh, real numbers. So any numbers uh, can be the unknown displacement. And uh, the established displacement functions will be used only for this element. You cannot uh, extend the displacement functions to any other uh, areas outside the elements. You cannot use the displacement function of these elements to uh, represent any point uh, which is uh, not located in this element. Okay, that's the uh, finite element method. And uh, the, the assumed displacement functions, sometimes you can say they are the uh, locally defined displacement function since the uh, the displacement functions will be uh, defined uh, only for this element you cannot use the, the these functions uh, which is outside the this element okay so that's the finite element method okay but uh, for the element free method or the mesh free method we have only the nodal points and uh, the nodal points can be randomly scattered on the, do on the domain it is no need uh, we have uh, no need to follow the rule uh, you need to uh, for uh, for a square area or circular area no need to uh, for this one you can scatter uh, you can define the scattered data points okay and the, all these data, uh, data points they are called uh, the nodal points and also we will def uh, assume the Okay, so we have the assumed uh, nodal displacements UI, VI uh, for each nodal point. So uh, if you got totally got N nodal points, then you will have two times N, uh, the number of the unknown nodal displacements will be equal to the two times N. Okay, so the total number of the unknown displacements will always uh, twice of the number of the nodal points okay after we assume the all these ui and the vi then we can define a continuous u functions and a continuous v functions based on the uh, the moving square method okay remember as long as we have discrete data points then we can use the moving square method to uh, to establish the approximate functions. Right now, we have the assumed nodal displacements UI and the VI. Then we can establish uh, two uh, independent displacements. Uh, one is the U function. The other one is the V functions. And uh, uh, for these two functions, they are established uh, by the uh, moving these square methods. Okay, so compare the, the displacement functions established by these two methods and the, the uh, displacement functions established by the finite element method. You will find the element free method or the mesh free method. You will get a continuous functions throughout the entire throughout the entire structures. Since the uh, as long as we use the weight functions, you will not have, uh, uh, you will not get the sudden change, no matter uh, for the a0, a1, a2, for any coefficients, you will not get uh, a, a sudden change or a jump of the function values. If the uh, all the coefficients a0, a1, a2, or or other they are continuously changed from point to point 
then you will not get a, a, a sudden change. So you can say the established displacement functions, they are continuous uh, throughout the entire structures. Not only the displacement functions, they are uh, continuous. Uh, even the derivatives of the uh, displacement, the derivatives of the displacement, uh, they are the strains of the structures. And uh, uh, the strains, they are also related to the strains. So for the uh, element-free method or the mesh-free method, you can get continuous displacements. Also, you can get the continuous strains and the continuous strains. Okay, I think uh, it's time to take a break and uh, I will continue in the next hour.